How does effective communication improve business operations? Well, let's think about this for a minute. When communication is poor, how well do things go? Now, the question is, how much time and energy do you want, do you want to invest in improving communication? We all know that communication makes things better, and sometimes you can over-communicate. Sometimes you may be giving too much information or more information and taking up time that people could be using to actually go execute on what they need to be doing. So communication is a balance. Mainly what we want to do with communicating, especially if we're a leader, if we're communicating, we want to communicate the why we're doing something if we, if we can. We want to communicate the why we're doing something so people understand the meaning behind what we're doing. The who is easy, who we're communicating it to. The what is the outcome we want to get. The where, also another easy one. The when, also an easy one. Mainly we're focusing on why something is important if we want to improve our business communication. And the who is going to be getting it done. Now, depending on how high the stakes are, you may want to leave much of the how up to the person who is going to be going and doing it. When you're delegating something, when you want to see people be innovative, we let them go figure things out on their own. If the stakes are high, though, we may want to put some boundaries around how they're going to go do something. So keep that in mind. Communication is always better, uh, but you can over-communicate. So stay focused on the basics and try not to tell people how to do things. Just try to, try to tell them the outcome you're trying to get them to. I don't know why I keep taking them out upside down. What are the best practices for conflict resolution in business? Conflict is no fun. Some people think it's fun. I don't think it's fun. The first thing any of us need to do when we're experiencing conflict in anything, whether it's business or not, is first saying, what am I contributing to this conflict? Am I making this conflict worse or am I trying to solve this? Understanding our own role in how things might be misunderstood, things might be getting tense, things might be getting more anxious or more aggressive. Understanding our own role is the first thing we always need to do. The second thing we need to do is we need to understand what is behind the conflict we have with the other person. In the world of negotiation, we talk about interests and positions. Positions are the, I'm not paying any more than this for this used car. Interests, in that case, are something like, I need a cheap used car to get back and forth to work because my other car is too expensive and gas is too expensive, right? So we want to understand not what someone's position is. A lot of times we get stuck in conflict because we get stuck on positions, and we want to understand what someone's interests are. What do they really want to get out of this? Because we may be able to help them get what they're looking for, without compromising on the things we don't want to compromise on. But we can't do that until we really sit down, listen, and try to understand what it is they're after, what it is they ultimately want to achieve, and let them know what we ultimately want to achieve as well. And then we can try to find those win-win solutions, whether it's conflict in business or anywhere else.